today we're at the AHR Expo, which is the huge conference every year for the HVAC industry. I'm on my own this time, so I don't have a camera person. I'm gonna be holding the camera myself. Grace is back because the girls are sick, but I'm gonna be making the rounds and showing you some of the cool stuff uh, that's come from our partners at this show. So let's start walking. If you know anything about ventilation, the people in the booth behind me are superstars in ventilation. HVI, Home Ventilating Institute, everybody say hey. Hey. All right. Home Ventilating Institute is where the engineers from all the ventilation manufacturers come to make sure that the third party testing is taking place and that they have standards to make sure that all of the fans and the ERVs and the HRVs are held to the same standards, basically for noise, for efficiency, for flows, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you guys so much. This is important. The ventilation testing video that we just dropped, we referred to standards, uh, ASHRAE 62.2. This is where the standards get written. The ASHRAE conference, which stands for the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers, uh, who writes all of this stuff. This is all volunteer led. This is where the stuff gets made, is at these meetings. So every January they meet, I think they also meet in the summertime. We're hoping that we're gonna get more involved with them, be able to bring you some behind the scenes stuff on how these decisions get made and how these calculations and the, all the algorithms that are now being built into codes um, are actually decided on. And you know where all of the CO2 levels and the air quality levels and the ventilation rates and all that stuff. So stay tuned for more about that. They are also based in Atlanta, so hopefully we'll be able to work with them uh, a lot more closely in the future. Bath fans. Grown new to in booth. We got some new uh, bath fans, which is clearly what we're thinking of right now because we just released a video on testing the very simplified versions of ventilation, one of which is just using a bath fan on a timer. So we've got the classic uh, Ultra Green, which is uh, high efficiency. It uh, meets all the highest HVI certifications. If you don't know what HVI is, Home Ventilating Institute, a lot of the ventilation manufacturers here are members of that, and they all kind of work together to test independently. So they have a third party testing facility that tests all this stuff and makes sure that they're all meeting the right uh, standards. Change the color of your light in your bathroom. If you have a teenager who wants to be able to do that, it help, gets them in a happy relationship with their <laughs> bath fan, that's cool. This one right here, interesting. Not exactly sure uh, about all the research on this, but this is a technology, the light spectrum that's coming out of this is the same one that's being used in uh, hospitals to control microbial growth. And of course, the microbe is something that we can't avoid. So it's not about killing all the microbes, but you know, I, I still wanna learn about this. Anyway, they're really working on doing more things with ventilation, giving you the opportunity to control more aspects of the home if you want to. So that's what's happening at Brown Newton. Let's keep walking. Renew Air where we've got ERVs, here is one. This one has EC fans, which means that they're infinitely variable. You can dial them in, in fact, you can see the dials right here. So we've got here two uh, fans, one outgoing air, and or excuse me, outdoor air, and one return air. The Each one has, you can dial in what exact speed you want the fan to run at. So there's a fan for the outgoing air, there's a fan for the incoming air, and you can balance them so that you could potentially put your house under a slight pressure if you want to. I don't like that. I like an equal pressure uh, on both sides, but if you wanted to take care of that, you can. Uh, it comes with MERV 13 filter as an option, which is good. That's only on the incoming stream. You don't really care how many particles are in the air going out. But um, the efficiency of these is tested by HVI, and we're working on trying to get better measurements for the latent transfer. Because of course, this is an ERV core, which is made of paper or something like that that could transfer humidity. And we know that the sensible efficiency of this core is something around 70%. But the humidity transfer isn't measured right now. And so that's another thing that we're like, you know, you'll see in future developments if you stay tuned to this channel. By the way, sorry about that noise over there, but there's a guy trying to talk over me really, really loud. Anyway, this is a really cool booth. These guys are very closely involved in HVI. You've seen Nick Agopian on this channel before. We gotta keep on walking. We're gonna do this. We're at the Chronomite booth, starting to disrupt the conversation around water heating. Everybody thinks of the tank that you've got in the basement. We have a crawl space, four feet tall. We'd have to have a sideways tank if we're gonna do it at all. It's not gonna work. And also what we're doing is uh, saving on the plumbing. 
So we're gonna run a cold water line throughout the house, and that's it. Because everywhere we go, we're gonna have one of these beautiful little guys. This is the smallest one that we're gonna have. This is a half gallon a minute, is that right, Ed? Up to a gallon and a half a minute. Uh, we've got a smaller one that can only do just a, a simple, you know, the powder room basically. But these are point of use. This is how they do it in Europe and in other places in the world outside the US. And of course, just because we do it that way in the US doesn't mean that's the only way to do it. So we're just trying to kind of have this conversation. You can have it inside the wall, it's gonna be invisible. Ours are gonna be mostly in the crawl space if you're following our build, uh, except for the one that's upstairs, which is gonna be inside the cabinet. So we don't necessarily have to hide it inside of a wall, but you can do that now. Let's keep walking. We're at the Ultra Air booth. You saw that I'm using one of these beautiful pieces of machinery to uh, control our crawl space during construction. This is Nikki Kruger. If you don't know Nikki, you need to know Nikki. She's one of the friendliest people in this entire show. And this is for all the people. <laughs> so she's the one that you should hang out with. Um, so what's, so first of all, this, what is yes. this thing? This is a uh, in-wall dehumidifier. So very innovative, only five and three quarters inches thick. So it fits inside a, a two by six wall. Um, and usually it goes on a mechanical closet. So we can come right out the back, but it'll fit right in between the studs. Awesome. Drain it into the closet, plug it in the closet, um, usually tying into the condensate line. But right there you get 33 pints of water removal, great for basements. 33 pints a day. a day. So that's what we're gonna be using in the studio in our house. And so you'll see that go in and we have the, the place picked out. It's gonna be beautiful. I like that it's like, you can't tell that it's, you can tell it's something, yes. but it's like, hmm, what is this? <laughs> and then we've got ducted solutions also, obviously. Yes. Santa Fe, by the way, is what uh, we have in uh, the crawl space at my dad's place. And that's a just standalone. You don't want to attach ducts to that. So if you just need a dehumidifier, obviously these can work too. And they have that technology that's very, you know, energy efficient. But um, you guys are, what are you working on now? We've got Anything some, fun? We do. We have some very innovative uh, products in the works. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll uh, be able to talk about those a little bit more this summer. <laughs> Not allowed to talk about it yet. Okay. Well, I will make sure that you are aware of them when they do happen. So um, stay tuned to this channel, obviously. Uh, we got a lot more stuff to see. So let's keep on walking. And when you're walking around in the halls, you will run into people that you love. Here's Joe. Joe has his crazy stuff sticking out of his backpack. This is how he rolls almost all the time. Whenever you see him in public, he's gonna have like a prop that's like a face mask or something. And you can see all that stuff on this video channel if you search his name, which is hard to spell, but I will spell it for you in the description. Um, you've been monitoring. You're like a human uh, data logging system in there, right? Yeah, so uh, my boss, Bill Hayward, he can't do these kind of shows. They're just too, um, sensory overload for him in terms of his uh, sensitive impact. But I thought I'd measure them today and find out what we're getting. So we had on average carbon dioxide minimum levels of 1200, which is considered a little uh, dizzy. Not great. For, yeah, not great for some people. But we rose to uh, a sleepy level of 2000 in multiple places. Nice. And those, some of those were near exits where they did have exposure to fresh air. So uh, the VOCs were actually lower than I expected. I had to eat my own lunch on that kind of uh, estimation. Uh, so we weren't as smelly as we thought, which is kind of funny. We just met a guy who has a. Um, an idea for, I, mean, I hope he doesn't mind that I tell you this, but he was like a uh, sensing company and they wanted to have a fart booth and give a prize for the highest VOC uh, You heard count. it here first and next yeah. time you see that this, booth, you're like, oh, Joe and Corbin talked about we're that. We're gonna so. freaking do that. That's gonna be in my house. So if you come to visit, we're gonna have that and I will give you an iPad if you- Corbin, uh, you just farted. <laughs> Learn a lot more about all that stuff at Hayward's score, by the way. Uh, not the farting part, but the rest of it. All right, last one. This is not a partner of ours yet, but this is Tiger, and he is the CEO of Toro. He is also very smart. I was like, are you an engineer? And he goes, I'm a high school dropout. So those are my favorite kind of people, like self-taught autodidacts. Um, he has a company that's a second generation. This is a cooling and drying machine, which you might know is called an air conditioner in some contexts, but in this case, we have separate cooling and drying. They are separated. And that is because we're using what's called a wet plate. Uh, what do you call it? Heat wet plate heat exchanger. My brain, after all day walking around here, is a little bit exploding right now because I don't completely understand. But I'm going to show you this diagram real quick. So that device, what's coming out of there, is cold. Like this is cold air coming out. Um, but there's no compressor in it. There's no refrigerant cycle. There's no outdoor condenser, anything like that. So what we're doing is like bringing in warm, moist air 
running it over this wet, cold, wet surface coil that then condenses even more water out of it and it drops the temperature. Uh, it's just like, anyway, this is really interesting. And so thank you very much for being, I, I, this is one of the last booths I visited today and I, this is very exciting. Gets me excited for tomorrow. Anything else to say? Yeah, you can find us online. Our website's torowat.com. And if you have any questions, just send us a mail and we'll get back to you. Awesome. And what's cool about this show is that you'll get, like, obviously all the huge corporations are here. But what's neat about this last hall that I'm in is this is all, like, small companies. And they some of them have amazing ideas like this, which I've never even thought of the possibility. So if you come to this show, make sure you walk the whole thing. Don't just go to the big uh, parts that have, like, big banners over the top and then tons of people stocking them. One guy, one invention, very interesting. So make sure that you comment, like, subscribe, tune in next time.